Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. This is Wendy. If you're new here, welcome, and I hope you'll hit that subscribe button down below and the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. Today I have six farmhouse DIYs using some Dollar Tree items and some items that you might have at home already on hand. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, and let me know what you think. I hope everyone's staying safe and keeping the faith. And so without further ado, let's get started. For our first project, I'm going to be using a scrap piece of 1x6 wood, some coordinating craft paper, and I got this at Michael's a few years ago, some Aileen's tacky glue, and I get this at Walmart, some Waverly wax in antique, some jute twine, a sanding sponge or sanding block, some miscellaneous scrap lamb's ear that I get from Walmart, some Dollar Tree white string tags, and then my glue gun and scissors. And so the first thing I did was had Michael J cut these down into little house shapes. And so I just showed him where I wanted the cuts to be. And he's a really good listener and just takes direction so well, except that he did want to start measuring and make the sides all perfect and straight, but that's not really how I roll. So he just went with it. And so I had him make one a little shorter than the other. And then for that shorter one, I wanted about an inch taken off of each side so that it would be a little thinner than the taller one. So once we got these all cut out, I took my sanding block and just started sanding them down to make them nice and smooth because we're going to be covering the fronts and backs. So there was a little bit of paint on the back of one, so I had to take my rotary sander and get that completely off so that it was nice and flat. And then I'm going to take my Waverly Wax and just paint the outside edges. And it was kind of getting a little bit too dark and looked a little bit too much just like brown paint. So I took my paper towel and wiped it off. And the top parts where it had kind of a raw cut right there, it was really taking that paint or the wax a little too much like paint. So I ended up adding a little bit of white Waverly chalk paint and lightened it up. But I really wanted to see the wood grain of it. So I just kept working with it and rubbing it off until I got it to the shade that I wanted. So now I'm gonna take that tacky glue and a sponge brush from Dollar Tree and just paint that onto the front of the wood. And you could use Mod Podge for this or even just some regular school glue just to get it on here and adhere the paper. But I wanted to make sure that I got to the very edges and over the ends so that my paper wouldn't lift at the edges. So now I'm gonna decide where I want my pattern to be once I have my houses standing up in front of each other. And so I, depending on what I want covered or don't want covered, is where I'm gonna make that placement of my paper. So once I figure out where I want the roses to be, I'm gonna use my fingers and just make lines over the edges so that I'll have a nice indentation and an easier place to cut. And so I'm gonna cut that excess off and then I'm gonna take my sanding block and sand away from the edges. And this just kind of gives it a finished look and because it's white on the other side of the paper, it also kind of gives it a white outline and looks really rustic and pretty.
So we're going to make this double sided and for this I'm going to use some Mod Podge and some scrap fabric in a black and white buffalo check and gingham. And I'm just basically doing the same exact thing except this time I'm using fabric. And so I cut a piece that's close to the size of the wood and then I'll use my Mod Podge, brush it on there and then place my fabric on top of it. And I'm going to let this dry a little bit longer than I did with the paper because the Aileen's is super, super thick. But with the fabric, I really wanted to have a thinner layer and let that have time to get a little stiffer because I don't want to put any on top. You totally could, but I was just going for more of a matte look and I didn't want it to be shiny or coated on the outside. This is a matte Mod Podge, but I just wanted to keep the Mod Podge off of the front of the fabric so that it didn't discolor or anything. So once it had a chance to kind of dry, I cut off the excess fabric and then I'm going to use my sanding block again to sand that off and it gave it a nice fringed edge and so it was a little different look than having sanded the paper on the other side, but I really liked that as well. So this gives you an idea for two completely different looks and two different mediums that you can use or materials if you want to do this project and Dollar Tree does have little wood houses that are in the craft section and they're a lot thinner than this but this just goes to show you too you can use scrap wood in the garage or whatever you have on hand you can make into these adorable little houses and you can see in the background my blinds were a little bit open and there's a tree right outside of my craft room window and the wind started blowing and the sun was shining through so that's what all those lines and shadows are in the background and on my workstation so I'm gonna have two different types of tags on each side of those houses and on the buffalo check side I'm gonna use the Dollar Tree tags and on one I'm gonna write stay and on the other one I'm gonna write home and so I just do a cursive writing and then I'm gonna use that downstroke method where Every time you go in a downward motion with your lettering, you're going to make that a little bit thicker so that it gives it some more interest and kind of gives it a faux calligraphy look. So then I'm going to cut off the strings that came with the tags because we're not going to use those. We're going to use the jute twine that we're going to wrap around our little houses. So I just wrapped around about five or six times and then I'm going to tie it on the side of the buffalo check and then make my tag go through one of the sides of the twine and then finish up that knot and make it into a sweet little bow.
So for the other side of the houses, I found these sweet little satin roses. And I'm going to use a couple of the leaves from the very tops of my lamb's ear branches. And so I just hot glued those together and then glued my rose on top of that and put that over toward the right side of my smaller house. And then I'm going to do a little embellishing on the other house and just did the same thing where I used two of the lamb's ear leaves and then I'll put two roses on that one. And then I'm going to add little tags to each of those and the tags are from a project that my daughter did earlier for a mops program anyway they're just tags so you just cut those out of cardstock and put a little hole at the top and on these I'm going to write simply and then on the other one blessed and so these are really good for if you're doing this project if you want to do one for like fall on one side and then Christmas on the other or if you want to do spring on one side and Easter on another but I just think this is a really cute way to use a scrap piece of wood and be just super cute. And here's the black and white buffalo check and gingham one all done and I think this turned out super super cute. It seems like there was a lot of steps but there really weren't as long as you can get that wood and have somebody to cut that down for you or like I said if you just use the ones from Dollar Tree that would work too. You wouldn't be able to stand those up unless you put like those Jenga blocks behind it so that it would stand up. So that's another idea, but I just think this is super cute and I love the pattern. And the farmhouse sign in the background is from another DIY that I did and I'll have that listed in the description box below if you wanna see that video. And I'm gonna show you guys all the pink stuff that I do at the second part of this video. And I really should have made two separate videos, but I wanted to get all of these out at one time because I was so excited at how everything turned out. So I hope you guys like this one. For our second project, I'm gonna be using this kitty litter container that I found in my craft room from a long time ago. And I'm gonna use this to put flowers in for my crafts. And then some Waverly white chalk paint and some black chalk paint, it's called ink. And then some Buffalo check ribbon that I get from Hobby Lobby during Christmas time. And then some jute twine and some acetone and paper towels. And then we'll be using the Silhouette Cameo. So I'm going to use my Frisco Craft black vinyl as well as some Dollar Tree transfer tape and the weeding tools. And then my hot glue gun and some scissors. And so the first thing I'm going to do is take my acetone and get as much of the ink off of the label that's on the side of the bucket as much as I can. And it probably won't show through the chalk paint, but just in case, I just didn't want it to show through at all. So then I'm going to take my handle and just pop it out of the two side grooves of, of the bucket. And then I'm going to start painting it with my white chalk paint. Now you could absolutely go outside and spray paint this, but I just really do not like the smell of spray paint. And this is gonna be in my craft room because I'm gonna use it to hold my flowers for my crafting projects. So I'm gonna paint the bucket white and then I'm gonna use my black and paint the handle completely black. And then I'm gonna go back and wrap that middle portion with some jute twine. And I'm not gonna be using the lid necessarily, but I am going to paint it black anyway in case I do change it up and use it for something different. And it's always good to have containers that have lids. And we don't have kitties, but my mother-in-law used to, so she would buy these and when they were empty she would give them to me because she knows I like to use them to organize. 
So now I'm going to measure the front of the bucket so that I can get the size I want for my decal that I'm going to place on the front. And so I just used my Silhouette Cameo 3 and design a decal for the front of it. And it says flower market, seeds, stems, blooms, and open daily. I'm looking at it right now, so I'm reading it off. But for the fonts that I use, I will have those listed in the description box below. And you can also purchase this in my Etsy shop, which is White Sparrow Living. So after I get it all cut out, I'm just gonna go through the same motions that we do every single time. I'm sorry if you get tired of seeing this, but I know when I was first learning how to use my Cameo, I was watching every single tutorial I could and I love the weeding process. I don't know why, it's kind of like pulling tape off of a newly painted project. So I'm just gonna weed everything out, take the top vinyl, the outside parts all out, and then weed the little inside the letters. And then I'm gonna take my transfer tape and put it on top of that and apply it to my bucket. So now I'm gonna take my handle and pop it back into those notches and I'm gonna take some buffalo check ribbon and wrap it around the top ledge and I'm gonna feed it under the handle so that it will still move back and forth. And I wanted it to be kind of crinkly and pleated so I just kind of gathered it and then tied a knot over to the right hand side. And then I'm gonna dovetail those edges just to give it a little cuteness. And then instead of just putting a rose in the middle of that knot, it was a little bit too bulky. So I took the rose apart and just started gluing down the layers piece by piece so that it laid a little bit flatter.
And so here it is all done and I think it turned out so super cute and it's so functional too. And like I said, I'm gonna be using this in my craft room for my flowers and so you could use this if you're not gonna use it for that, you could use it for other crafting items like your ribbons. And if you don't wanna use it for your craft room, you could use it as a storage place for your gardening tools. There's a lot of things you can use, but I think making storage and functional pieces cute is a win-win. So I hope you guys like this. For our next project, I'm gonna be using this hanging basket, not the basket part, but just the chains and the hooks, and then a cake pan, a metal hanging plant bracket, and then a plastic plate that comes in a package, a chinette plate, and then a round mirror, and then this is a bean boozled spinner thingy. So if you have a game that has a spinner, you can use that for your scale. And then a large nail, a piece of wood, some E6000 Mod Podge and a sponge brush. And then this printout of a scale face and then some Waverly white chalk paint and some black paint. And you can use acrylic. I actually used chalk paint as well and then some hot glue, your scissors, and your wire cutters. And so the first thing I did was painted my cake pan in the white. I like to pour the paint into or onto whatever surface I'm painting, but in this case, I got a little bit too much, a little too carried away. So I was painting and pulling it off and putting it back into the jar. But I just gave this two coats and made it pure white. I was going to do the galvanized treatment, but decided to go with the enamel wear look. So I'm just going to paint it completely white and then go back with my black chalk paint and do the edges and make a few of those little chips that you see in authentic enamel wear. But I'll do that after it's completely dry. So now I'm gonna get the face of my scale done and I just popped out the back and I'm gonna twist the little hanger upside down and then put it back in backwards into the frame. And then I'm gonna take my black chalk paint and paint in the entire mirror and the cardboard surrounding it because I'm gonna put my paper, which is the printout of the scale on top of that. And this way it has a nice flat surface to glue down onto. So after I get that painted, I'm gonna print out from my so-called DIY blog, and I'll have this in the description box below so that you can print out that scale on your own home computer. And I just did it on regular copy paper and printed it out, and then I'm going to cut it out and use Mod Podge to adhere it to the painted mirror. This is a really good DIY blog. Her name's Emily, the writer of this, and so she's got a lot of good ideas on there, so you may wanna check that out anyway. And so now, just because this is a brand new piece of paper, I wanted to make it look a little older, so I just took my fan brush and used my black chalk paint to give it some lines and some age looking distressing. And then I'm gonna take my Mod Podge and then paint it onto my mirror and then place that paper right on top of that. And when you're positioning the paper onto the mirror, you wanna make sure that the very bottom is in the same position as the little picture hanger on the back that we turned around, because that's gonna be serving as the part that's gonna hold our hook once we get our scale put together. So if this were a clock, it would be in the six o'clock position. So now I'm gonna take my plate and kind of look at where it's positioned on the outside so that I can take my E6000. And this is actually the black type, which worked perfectly. I bought this on accident, not realizing it was black, but it sure has come in handy for a number of projects. So I'm just gonna take one small bead and go all the way around the face of the scale and then place my plastic plate over that and hopefully it will get a good adhesion and fall into that E6000. 
So now I'm gonna take my little spinner and hot glue that to the outside. You could, because there is enough room, place that underneath so that the entire spinning mechanism will be underneath that plastic part. But because the plastic plate says Chinette, I wanted to cover that up. So now I'm gonna take the planter itself and mark where the three holders would be so that I get a flat and even hanging scale. So I'm gonna take my big fat nail and hammer that into those three places to make holes. And I just placed a piece of scrap wood underneath it so I didn't hurt my work surface. So once I got my holes made, I'm going to take the large hook from the chain and I'm gonna turn it upside down and feed it through the hanging part of the mirror and close up that small hook and then leave the big hook hanging down. And now I'm gonna do my enamel wear treatment using my black chalk paint and a sponge brush. And I'm just gonna go around the edges and give it kind of a rough finish so that it's not perfect. And then chances are I'm gonna mess up. And so when I do that, I use that as one of the areas that I'll do that chippy look that you see on enamel wear. And then once I get all the edges done and any chip marks that I wanna make there, I'm gonna go back in and do some random chip marks on the rest of the cake pan. So now I'm gonna make the top part that's gonna actually hang on our bracket. And I just take my pliers and open up the link of the hook and take one of the chains off. There's normally three, but I've used one in something else. And so I'm gonna make it the length that I want to have at the top. And you can adjust this according to wherever you're gonna hang it so that it can be longer or shorter. But I'm just gonna open that final link up and make it into a hook so that that can be stuck inside the frame in between the cardboard and the plastic frame itself. And then I'm gonna get it exactly in line with that bottom hook. And then I'm gonna take my E6000 and some hot glue and get that to stay in place. And then I'm gonna take the little clips and feed each one of those into the holes and then pull them all together and determine how tall I want that to be or how long I want it to hang and then take off the links in order to get it to the proper height that I want. And so to do that, I just open the links and then take them apart and then I'm gonna have one link holding those three together, if that makes sense. And I'm gonna show you all three of these pieces together in a vignette at the end of this video. And here's how it turned out. And I think it is so adorable and very farmhouse. It cost a total of $4, including the bracket that it's hanging on, but it's really lightweight. And I just stuck some lamb's ear inside of the little cake pan. And I have this on my shiplap wall, so I didn't want to put any nails in there to show you guys, but I just used a command hook, so I had to work fast because I knew that wasn't going to hold up for very long, but I didn't want to ruin my shiplap either. So I think it turned out so cutie patootie. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, but I hope you guys like this.
So now we're going to move over to the pink vignette and for that I'm going to use this embroidery hoop. It's a 10 inch embroidery hoop and then some scrap burlap that I had on hand and then some miscellaneous Dollar Tree roses and I like the lighter pinks and not the real dark dark pinks. Some lamb's ear from Walmart and I actually used two sprigs and then some Waverly White chalk paint and antique wax. One of the metal words from this Easter pack that says Happy Easter Blessings. And then my hot glue gun and my scissors and my wire cutters. So the first thing I'm gonna do is paint my embroidery hoop with the Waverly antique wax. And I got this embroidery hoop from a friend who gave me a whole bunch of them. So I'm gonna be making some more DIY projects using them. I just have to think of what I'm gonna do. But you can find these at thrift stores. The Goodwill always has them. And so they're pretty easy to come by, but also you can buy them from Walmart as well. So I just put a layer of the wax on there and I don't need to do the inside. I didn't take them apart to do each individually, but I just did it on the outside and the front of the embroidery hoop. So now I'm gonna paint my word with my Waverly White chalk paint and I want this to be completely solid so I just went in and painted it and I gave it a few coats. There was a little bit of water still in my brush which is a bad thing but I just painted over that and then I'm gonna go back in with my Waverly wax in antique and brush over that very lightly with my fan brush just to make it a little distressed. And then to speed up the drying process in between coats, I'm using my heat gun. And I've had a lot of viewers asking me about this heat gun. You could use a blow dryer too, but this is an actual heat tool and it's called Daris or Daris or I don't know, Daris. Anyway, <laughs> I got that at Walmart a number of years ago. So I don't know if they still have them, but I'm sure you can find something on Amazon or somewhere. So I keep moving my word so that it doesn't stick to my paper towel. So here's where I'm gonna do my distressing and I just use a super, super dry brush and get that on there. And when I'm painting it, if you stay going in a horizontal motion, it's pretty neat because the wax will kind of collect at the edges. So it gives you an automatic distressed look on your metal word. So now I'm gonna cut a strip of burlap and I'm gonna go parallel with the selvage edge so it doesn't come apart when I stretch it into my embroidery hoop. And so I am going to open up the top part of the embroidery hoop by turning the screw and loosening it up. And then I'm just gonna lay it right on top of the inner hoop and replace the, the outer hoop and then tighten it and pulling it a little as I go just to make sure it's nice and tight inside of it. And then I'll cut off the excess burlap from the back. So now I'm going to take my lamb's ear and I don't like when the backs of the leaves are showing so I kind of deconstruct these and then re-glue them so that the fronts are toward the front and so I just pull some pieces off and then reattach them with my hot glue and get it to the way it looks pretty when you're facing it. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but my nails finally came off. I had one thumbnail that broke in a prior DIY, but I ended up taking all of them off. And I've had a few of you asking me about my nails, which I think is so cute. But I have my friend Ashley at Color Street Nails who got me a set of, they're like these peel and stick types of nails. It's your own nail, but you put the sticky stuff over the top of them and it gives you a you can have just like a color or a design or whatever but in my case it was the French and so she got me some of these stat and knew that I needed to do that before my next video so that's how I handled my nail situation so 
Now I'm just going to add my flowers and I put three roses and I cut them down and cut the little plastic pieces off from the back and then I'm going to hot glue those together and then add a couple of other flowers and if you have any that are a little too dark or there's dark pieces like this situation, I just use my scissors and kind of cut a jaggedy line and then I get rid of that dark icky color. And I also get a lot of questions about my finger protectors. And so these were out of stock the last time I had them linked in my description box. So I'll find some more on Amazon that are at a similar price. And mine were actually from China. And so they took like a month to get here. And I've heard other people who had ordered the same ones. It did take a long time to get them. But I will find some that will be hopefully in stock and may not take as long to get to you. But they're definitely needed for a job like this so you don't burn yourself. So now using some hot glue, I'm going to work really fast and glue down my happy word to the right side of the burlap and it is done. And here it is all finished and I am so in love with this. It's so soft and precious and I just love how everything came together and it gives you a little bit of juxtaposition between the burlap and the pretty, pretty roses. And it's got a great message because everybody needs to be happy. For a final project, I'm going to be using three books, some more of that burlap fabric, some jute twine, and some more lamb's ear, and then my hot glue gun and scissors. So this is such an easy and quick DIY, but all I did was pulled off the cover and a few of the pages at the beginning and made sure that the ones that were showing were pages that had only words. So I'm going to wrap these and I decided I wanted them to stand up instead of laying down on the side so I was having trouble getting the spines completely off and so I used my heat gun to heat up the glue and then I was able to pull that off and then I'm going to put them together and then wrap some burlap around it and I didn't have quite enough so I had to piece it together and then I'm going to wrap jute twine around it and then put some lamb's ear on the side and a couple of little flowers from a hydrangea bush and add that for some color to match our little vignette. And I have a few of these books that were from my mother-in-law who has passed away and she used to love romance novels and so these are all books that she's read and so I like keeping these around because they're good size for crafts like this and it's also sentimental because I know that she read them and so it's a keepsake that is also super cute.
so I decided I didn't like how white they were and they looked too new so I just took some of the Waverly antique wax and made them look a little old and used and then I'm gonna stage this with the houses and so I had a beaded garland that I did in a prior DIY and so I'm just using the back side and I'm gonna write pray with my paint pen from Walmart and then I'm gonna put that all together and I ended up using the antique wax also on the medallion part of the beads and so it would match with the houses and everything else I did so if you do this don't do it the way I did it do it beforehand so then you can paint over it but it worked out and it matches a lot better And here's how this one turned out and I think this is so sweet and it's a perfect little way to use the books that you may not be reading anymore or that somebody else gifted you and every time you see it you can think of them. And here's the entire pink vignette and I am definitely a sucker for pink so I love how soft everything is and it goes with the darker woods too and so I just hope you guys like it. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to hit that subscribe button give it a thumbs up comment and let me know what you think you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook as well as my Etsy shop which will be listed in the description box below I hope everybody has a blessed day and remember to always be the light bye